guys, my name is Tommy Atama Garjias and you're watching Arts 101 for the month of October. This month is going to be filled with creepy ghostly treats and great creative ideas for the late October festivals. Up first, we have costume ideas from a local costume maker, Terry Hendricks Scopey. Then we'll have a quick video by me, it's a secret, can't find out yet. Then after we'll have an interview with artist Darlene Boyd who has an exhibit about the Black Sage Gallery in Hollister, California. After our pre brief chat with Darlene, we'll have some more festive tips from Kirsten Dornkamp. Thank you again for watching Arts 101. Up first, let's have some tips and tricks with costume maker Darlene Terry Hendricks. Hi, my name is Terry Hendricks Shopey, and I'm going to talk to you today, today about creative ways for Halloween costumes for this scary season. First thing for all those little ghouls in your house, I went to Michael's and I bought some hands and then you clip them into hair clips. Give them cute little fascinators for their dark outfits if they want to be a vampire or a zombie or even a dark princess. All the girls like to be little zombie girls, see? You can wear that. You can decorate it up with ribbons. I used hot glue, ribbons, feathers, and scrap laces that I found. A little bit of tulle. Here I found an old, a rose from the dollar store and stuck a little skull on. Some more scrap lace. All hot glued together. That way they can spice up their costume. Otherwise, my biggest tip for um, finding costumes is going to Goodwill or recycling old clothing, cutting it up, making it look dirty so it has more of a ghoulish feel to it. You can cut it up and do big wide stitches. That gives it more of an organic stitched together look. And then get it dirty. Don't be afraid of getting them in the mud. Give the kids, put it on. Let them roll around in the mud and the, and the leaves. They love this sort of thing. And then going, taking them to the local stores to buy something is their great accessory. Well, that wraps it up. Give you a couple quick, easy, cheap tricks to get your little ghouls all ready for Halloween. And I hope you have a great season. Happy haunting. Mwah! Thank you, Terry, for those great Halloween costume tips. Up next, we have a video by myself, Tommy Atomic Rodriguez, about everything I've done in B-Boy Play by Play and all my greatest clips and tricks. Hope there's some of yours, too. See you real soon. Hey, guys, what's up? My name is Tommy Atomic Rodriguez, and this is another episode of B-Boy Play by Play. Today, we're going to show you highlights of every episode we've had, our favorite stunts, places we've been, and some of the favorite crews that were mentioned in this game. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Tommy Atomic Rodriguez. Welcome to another episode of B-Boy Play by Play. What's up guys? I'm Brooke Pinkston filling in for Tommy and you're watching B-Boy Play by Play. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Tommy Atomic Rodriguez and this is B-Boy Play by Play. Now today we have coverage of Cypher Cup Cinco de Mayo edition. This week we have footage from the Mellow Dance Center in Watsonville, California. The feeling the funk hosted by B-Boy Tango of 700 Crew. Now, like Brooke promised you guys a week before, we have coverage of B-Boy Revival 3. For y'all, two competitions held at one time. The first one we're gonna talk about is a jam called Seven to Smoke. We have a local dance video in Gilroy, California called B-Boy Vader. Me, Brooke Pinkston of Shade. Hi there, I'm Brooke Pinkston and I'm here with B-Boy Vader. Yes, we actually just got done hosting an event called Standing Your Ground 2. And it was extremely fun, may I must say. It was fun. Is the DJ playing great music? Every B boy and bring, showing out their skills with flips, tricks, anything to do to get that one judge vote.
All right, guys, that's actually all the time I have for today. My name is Tommy Atomic Rodriguez, and remember, b-boying isn't just a dance. It's a lifestyle we choose to live. Guys, that's actually all the time I have for today. I'm going to get something to eat. But my name is Tommy Atomic Rodriguez, and remember, b-boying isn't just a dance. It's a lifestyle we choose to live. Till next time, I'll see you later. Good to you, Tommy. I like that. That was awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Well, um, looks like that's all we have for you guys today. Is? Yeah, unfortunately. Darn. Bummer. Well, you know what, guys? Till next time, remember, b-boying isn't just a dance. It's a lifestyle we choose to live. I'm Tommy Atomic Rodriguez. And I'm Brick Peak Stunna Stunna Shades. And we'll see you next time. Well, that's it for b-boy play-by-play. Stay tuned for next week when we have b-boy revival three. I'm Brooke Pinkston, and I'll see you later. For today, guys, my name's Tommy Atomic Rodriguez. And remember, b-boying isn't just a dance. It's a lifestyle we choose to live. Until next time, may the force be with you. That's actually all the time I have for today. Tune in next time, we'll have another video for you. And remember, b-boying isn't just a dance. It's a lifestyle we choose to live. I gotta get out of here. Peace. Well, guys, that's actually all the time I have for today. My name's Tommy Atomic Rodriguez. This is B-Boy Play-By-Play. Next time, we'll have another video for you guys. Well, just remember, b-boying isn't just a dance. It's a lifestyle we choose to live. It's getting late. I gotta get home for dinner. I gotta run. Peace. I hope you liked that video. I had a great time going to all the different dance events, and I hope to see you at the next one. Up next, we have an interview with a local painter and sculptor, Darlene Boyd, with our super producer, James. Let's see what Darlene has to say about her process and her inspirations. Hi there, and this is James Duesenberg with CMAP. Thank you for joining us with Arts 101. Today we are in Hollister at the Black Sage Gallery and we're taking a look at a local art exhibit for local artists around the area and this is part of a, an exhibit that's going to be ongoing, rotating with the Arts Council in Hollister and uh, that's about it. We'll be talk, talking with some local artists that are being exhibited here today and um, take a look and enjoy. I'm Darlene Boyd and I live in San Benito County um, and I have been doing art since I was 11 years old. So I got started of course taking art after school with this woman and I did it for about three years and absolutely loved it and then continued on when I got to high school and then on into college and just kept after it. Um, eventually majoring in sculpture with a large emphasis in painting and drawing. So that's sort of my background. Who have been some of your, I guess, inspirational um, artists from the early years? From my early years, I would have to say, hands down, Van Gogh. You know, I absolutely love the energy of a lot of his, um, his paintings and, and things and also, um, just the way he would go out there and be in the elements and feel the elements and you could feel that in his paintings when I was painting. When I got around to doing sculptural work, I really enjoyed doing figurative work much more. So Rodin and Michelangelo were sort of the people I kind of looked up to. Um, as my art progressed throughout the years, I got more into feminist art and looking at that, studied Judy Chicago quite a bit and looking at trying to do collaborative pieces. Um, never was in a position to really formulate that much of that, but um, really enjoyed the whole concept of looking at women's history and women in the arts and that kind of thing. So I could grow from 
whatever they did. Getting back to some of that right now, so Great. kind of coming full circle, <laughs> mm -hmm. kind of thing. So the women that I painted can't. Um, one is from Indian Canyon here in Hollister, and um, she and her mother lived there, and her mother reclaimed that land because I would think it was owned by her great grandfather or something, and um, it's a place where. Historically, the Indians had hid out when they did not want to be participating with the Catholic Church and stuff. And if they didn't like what was going on, they headed over there. But today, they use it for um, ceremonial purposes. And then the other two women, one um, is a young woman of the Rumson tribe. And they're from the Rumsons, I believe, are out of the um, Carmel Mission, the Native Americans that were around the Carmel Mission. And then there's another Ohlone woman with her child. And then my fourth painting is basically farm workers. Okay, women farm workers that I saw working out in the fields here. And um, in very floral kind of setting. And um, it was very interesting because they had these colorful jackets on. But it was just the whole thing to me, these women who come here and they support their their families and their communities and try to get ahead and I mean this is probably immigrants coming to this country and I call that one let freedom bloom so <laughs> that was and that's one of my more successful paintings that I really have enjoyed what's something else that you want to start venturing into something that you know is a new inspiration that you want to try a, a new inspiration I would like to do an illustrated book of some kind I as a teacher I get asked when I walk into the classroom and sign my name, Ms. Boyd, what does Ms. mean? So I would like to do a book titled, Please Call Me Ms. because it's not Miss and it's not Mrs. And there's a whole historical and important reason. Yeah, it's Ms. Ms. means I'm nobody's property. You know, I'm not my father's property having been given to my husband as property, and that's what Miss and Mrs. come out of. And Ms. is a very important title, and I find that uh, most students don't even know that. They have no clue. So I would like to really do an illustrated book on that, so. Great. Thank you so much, Darlene. <laughs> You're welcome, James. And we'll see you out there. <laughs> okay, sounds good. and today I'm going to be showing you some easy make no bake Halloween ideas. For starters we're going to be making Oreo spiders. So what you first do is you pull off the top of the cookie and you just get that. You make sure you have some sort of like red vines or twizzlers or just some sort of gummy stretchy thing <laughs> and make sure you have four. You push them into your Oreo cookie, like so. Mush them in there. And then you put the other cookie back. Make sure it's pushed down. And now you have yourself a Halloween Oreo spider. Me. For our second idea, what we're going to be making is worms and dirt. For worms and dirt, you're going to need a chocolate pudding snack and some gummy worms. So you just take the pudding snack and you open it up. Take the lid all the way off in this case. <laughs> and you take your worms and you pretty much just stick them in. You kind of like arrange them so they're kind of trying to crawl out of the dirt. And that how you make worms and dirt. Now for this next idea, it's a little bit involved, but what you're going to be doing is basically, you're going to be stenciling your own cookie ideas and decorating cookies to create a professional sort of idea in a very short period of time and with little effort. So what you need is, you're gonna need some plain sugar cookies, sprinkles of different Halloween colors and ideas, 
some frosting, and some writing icing in different colors. So that way you can do some final decorations. Oops. Now for this next idea, it's a little bit involved, but what you're going to be doing is basically, you're gonna be stenciling your own cookie ideas and decorating cookies to create a professional sort of idea in a very short period of time and with little effort. So what you need is, you're gonna need some plain sugar cookies, sprinkles of different Halloween colors and ideas, some frosting, and some writing icing in different colors. So that way you can do some final decorations. Oops. So what you do is you take a cookie, go ahead and set it down. And oop, you can take uh, stencils, that's how I did these ones, such as the tombstone, the cat, and the pumpkin. Or you can just freehand it, such as the ghost, my other pumpkin, and bats in a night sky. So for freehanding, you just take some frosting. I'm gonna make another ghost. And put it on the cookie. In a ghostly shape. You can smooth it down a little if you don't like how bulky it is. <laughs> and in this case, I think what I'll do is I will give my ghost some cinnamon eyes so they're glowing red. Really simple, really easy, and it looks professional in a matter of minutes. Okay, and then for the final idea, it's not a baking idea, it's not a eating idea, it's a decorative idea to help decorate the table and the area around. So what you're gonna need to make these ghosts is you're gonna need some string, scissors, a Sharpie for the face, and some paper towels. So what you do is you take two paper towels, about standard size, you take one and you crumple it up into a ball. And you stuff it up inside the other one. You take some string. Tie it around. Right underneath where you've balled up the uh, paper towel. And tie it. And now, you have to take your Sharpie or marker, and you just draw on a couple of eyes, I think a scary mouth for saying boo. And there you go, you have a hanging ghost. Perfect for decorating your little get together with your easy make, no bake craft ideas. Hi, I'm Terry Hendricks Shopee, and I'm here to give you a few quick tips to learn how to face paint. First of all, get your 40% off coupon, go to Michael's, pick up one of the kits at 40% off, and they give you great pictures and ideas to start. When I first started, I lined up all the neighborhood kids and I just painted their faces, and then I gave them some brushes and let them paint my hands, not necessarily my face, and let them give a try at it. Um, so my first biggest step would be to get some good brushes. You can use cheaper paints, but you're gonna get what you pay for in your brushes. They make finer lines. And I use wider brushes for wider strokes and thinner brushes to go back in and give detail. It's all about layering. The second thing is I went to the dollar store and got uh, some little cups that I keep 
one with just white paint, one with color paint, and one with black paint. That way you don't muddy up your water in your cups. and It makes it a lot easier to keep painting. Um, otherwise, then I went online and picked up, after I'd practiced some, some different and interesting things and made a little booklet that the kids can flip through to get different styles of face paint. And even the adults like it. We end up doing quite a few of the Dio de las Muertes paintings. So have fun with it. Get your books, some good tools, a mirror. Oh, and I almost forgot, everything is better with glitter. Michaels does really nice, fine, fine glitter. You want the finer the better, that way it doesn't get in the kids' eyes. But after I'm done, a little bit of water on my finger, dip it in the glitter and put it all over. The boys and the girls love it. So, have fun painting. Thank you, Terry, for those great tips and tricks. Now, while I try some of those tricks for Halloween, next we have our calendar events, something that you got to see. Thank you for joining us on Arts 101. My name is Tommy Atomic Rodriguez, and don't forget to have an art-filled month. See you soon. Hi, I'm your producer James Duesenberg and I'm bringing you the Arts 101 events calendar for October 2012. This show has been a fun experience with many fun holiday event ideas and we got to meet a couple of local artists around here in Hollister and San Juan Bautista. So, up first for the month of October in San Juan Bautista at the Galleria Tonatzin is the Dia de los Muertos art gallery showing from October 2nd to November 15th. It's located at 115 Third Street. For more information, call 831-623-2783. Next, in Gilroy at the Limelight Actors Theater is Steel Magnolias. You've got to check out this show. It's from October, the beginning of October through October 12th. There are Friday and Saturday performances at 8 p.m. and there's a matinee showing at 2 p.m. It's at the Gilroy Center for the Arts at 7341 Monterey Street. For reservations, call 408-472-3292. Up next, on October 7th, in California here, it's the Folklorico Festival with special guest Mariachi Juveni, uh, Almo de Mexico. I believe this is in Gilroy and it's uh, Sunday, October 7th. So don't forget this Folklorico event, October 7th at 7 p.m. in Gavilan College at 5055 Santa Teresa Boulevard, Gilroy, California. Next, on October 7th is in Gilroy, an arts exhibit at 12 at the Gilroy Center, 12 p.m. at the Gilroy Center for the Arts at 7341 Monterey Street. And it's at the same location where the Limelight Theater is. So, Next, on October 13th at the Gavilan College Theater is a big, view, big event, great for kids. It's music for witches, ghosts, and goblins. So perfect, it's October. Check this out, 7.30 p.m. for more information go and call the Gavilan Theater uh, and check for free tickets many places around town here at Booksmart in Morgan Hill, at First Street Coffee in Gilroy, at the Postal Graphics in Hollister, and at the Mission Galleria in San Juan Bautista. It's free for students up to 18 and children. We hope to see you there. Coming up next in Gilroy on October 14th, is open poetry readings. Sounds like something I'd really like to see. It is with the um, Galicturi group of poets. It's on Sunday, October 14th, of course this year, at uh, 3.30 p.m. Again, it's in Gilroy at the Public Library at 350 West 6th Street in Gilroy, California. Coming up next, in Gilroy again, lots of events happening over here. On October 23rd is the Senior Center Crafts class. And this is a reoccurring class that's happening many times every month. We wanted to feature this. It's on Tuesday, October 23rd at 9.30 a.m. It's at 73 
71 Hannah Street. I believe that's the Senior Center in Gilroy, California. So thank you so much for watching Arts 101 and the events calendar, and we will see you next month with more great art events, writers, performers, and exhibits. See you soon on Arts 101.